Now it's time to look at healthcare industry. This session is Thailand Healthcare Development of International Healthcare Centers of Excellence in Thailand, Private and Academic Perspective by Dr. Tadri Duangnet, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Medical Affairs, Bangkok Dusit Medical Services, and Chief Executive Officer of Bangkok Medical Center. His extensive experience in healthcare governance, management, and operations include a healthcare career of 21 years in the United States, followed by over 20 years in Thailand as a member of senior management and board director in leading international hospital. The next panelist, clinical professor Pradit Panjawinin, hospital director Sililat Piyat Mahakarun Hospital. Dr. Pradit has over 20 years of experience in interventional cardiology and medical teaching. He took the position of head of cardiology division and the director of Her Majesty's Cardiac Center, Faculty of Medicine, Sililat Hospital, Mahidon University during 2003 to 2009 and to 2009 to 2012. And the moderator for this event, Mr. Tadri Praupraigun from Patra Securities. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the panelists and the moderator on the, on the stage to begin the panel discussion. Hello, สวัสดีครับ. My name is Chatri Prabhupada from Patra Securities. Uh, welcome everybody to panel session on Thailand healthcare. We are excited to have with us today the head of two of Thailand's leading medical institutions from the private side, uh, Bangkok to Sit, as well as from the public sector, Sirilat Piyat Maharaj Karun. Uh, in the past decade, Thailand has been able to establish itself as a medical destination, attracting patients from all over the world, thanks to high quality of healthcare available at reasonable cost. Dr. Chatri and Dr. Pradit are here today to discuss the future development of Thailand healthcare from both the private as well as the public sector perspective, and how Thai hospitals can continue to remain competitive globally in the coming decade. I would now like to turn the floor over to Dr. Chatri to start the discussion. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> it's a great honor for me to be here this morning. Uh, I was here last year. There was some, there was some uh, disturbance. Two years ago. Looks like the audience like 100% uh, growth. You've done a great job. Uh, growth 100% is very good. Uh, uh, I would like to say something today. Uh, we got, we got to talk about. Uh, Today, the session is going to be the healthcare industry in Thailand. Why all of a sudden all of us in, uh, in Thailand start uh, to talk about center of excellence, especially in, um, in the private sector? And uh, today is uh, an honor for us to be able to ask uh, Sirirat uh, Medical School to come and talk with us. Uh, I have to do some disclaimer this morning also that CIRAD is not here to promote uh, the healthcare. CIRAD has been the best center of excellence in this country for so long, and uh, they're not coming to talk about center of excellence in their perspective. I, I think they want to come and tell the position why they are uh, doing private uh, uh, healthcare looks like they're competing with the private side, but it's not. But I will let Professor Padit talk about that part. But I have the disclaimer is that Sirat is here just to, uh, to announce their position in doing a private center of excellence in this country. So uh, starting with, uh, with my, my part here, if you don't mind, I'd like to stand up. Otherwise, they cannot talk, OK? Uh, excuse me. So uh, about the Thailand healthcare development, 
uh, on uh, for excellent center in Thailand uh, on the private perspective. Just very quickly, I'm going to take only a few, uh, like 20 minutes, and then go on, and then we have some time for question and answer session. Transforming organization, everybody knows about this already, just to remind that we are transforming people. We're talking about people. We invest on people. We make sure our people getting from uh, beginner. Uh, when we start uh, doing something like healthcare, care on certain diseases, care on certain uh, 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 on on uh, like cardiology or brain diseases or cancer care, we start from beginning, from one point, and then we keep practicing on the same standard over and over and over and over. Professor Anders Eriksson in Germany in 1990, everybody knows about that already. If you practice on the same, same standard, same thing all the time, from beginner, you will become uh, elite. You become master within four years and elite after five years. So you're talking about uh, standardization from beginning and then going to center of excellence. So, uh, so, starting center of excellence is meaning you have to train your people and you're going to take some time until they can achieve uh, uh, from master being good and then to elite being the best. And then those people come together, doing one standard, treating one disease together being a, an organization, being a group. So the uh, transforming people working on one standard, together on the same standard over and over again. So uh, like adjust the standard, doing training, and then tracing each other, make sure they're doing the same thing, make sure they're uh, practicing, they're rehearsing, and then auditing from outside, and then do continued quad improvement until time come, the whole group being going to be a group of excellence. So the, that means a total transformation, people transforming together as a group. When time comes to uh, three years, four years, five years, they'll become center of excellence. In summary, for transformation to center of excellence. Musician practicing themselves on this instrument. They're getting better and better and better on their instrument. And they work together on one standard, mean one piece of music together, along with that, until they can perform on that standard up to excellence level. That's why when you go and see certain Organization, they have so many standards. You cannot practice so many music at the same time. If you want to be center of excellence, you have to have one or two standards and go on with the same standard all the time. There are lots of organizations with a standard of care uh, uh, in paper on the walls. So many of them, and they don't really practice, and they cannot be the really center of excellence. For uh, in Thailand, I will have to say from this point on, uh, for uh, center of excellence, <coughs> I will have to use the example of uh, BDMS, Bangkok Dusit Medical Service. Please, uh, I would like to say at this point that this is to brag or not propaganda. It is just to tell you who, uh, how we're doing center of excellence in private sector and why we're doing it. In our perspective, the reason we're doing center of excellence, our president said early this year, which all of you heard about that already, from capacity growth, 2011, 2015, we're gonna go to complexity growth 
2016-2018 to attract referrals from ASEAN and Asia-Pacific. Horizontal growth or capacity growth. We have been doing that since 2011, and you all know this uh, statistic already. In 19, uh, 2011, we had 18 hospitals. Right now, we have 43, 25 hospitals. And luckily, uh, we're trying very hard to keep our margin. Yeah, it's a drop a little bit here, but we still keep it. Working very hard for that. And then at this moment, we have 43 hospitals, 7,669 beds. And our global ranking for listed hospital, we're number four in uh, capitalization. But luckily, we can do net profit margin number one in the world right now. That, what the president said, we have been, we have almost done with our, our capacity growth or horizontal growth. Now we go to vertical growth or complexity growth from this year up to 2018. This is uh, uh, the re uh, we like to uh, I like to explain uh, the vertical growth of our company. This is uh, uh, target patient purchasing power. Uh, this is uh, social security up to middle income, high income, and uh, international patients. And this is complexity, medical sophistications from secondary tertiary and super tertiary. We have one group that taking care of uh, uh, elite group, and we have one group taking care of uh, complexity, but uh, less purchasing power. We have another group that take care of uh, uh, Thai people in social security and some uh, less uh, expensive. So we've been doing that all along during our uh, capacity growth. Now we want to do complexity growth. We are creating another group up there. And that group is very high complexity and high purchasing power for international patients, for elite ties. And we call that a group of center of excellence, or I'm gonna say COE from now on. Center of excellence is as we create a super hub of few hospitals, plus co-branding with already fully transformed organization from outside our country to come and work with us. Super hub, meaning uh, the hubs have to have their spokes. They take care of their, uh, and as I mentioned from the beginning, center of excellence means people. So the, the resource that's gonna be the most critical is gonna be people. We have to be able to transform uh, the, we have to be able, able to transfer all the transformed people, elite people to all of the spokes. So you talk about doctors can go to all the uh, center of excellence, nurses, patients going back and forth, and, and, and then equipment and everything. That's the hub, super hub. Now, co-branding. We need to have co-branding to be center of excellence because we cannot do everything ourselves. We have to have super uh, hub from outside the country to come work with us. Uh, like cancer, right now we assist the institute with uh, CIRAD and uh, Juralongkorn University and uh, a medical school to be assist the institute with MD Anderson. Right now we are signing contract to do co-branding with MD Anderson for cancer care and uh, occupational health, pediatrics, rehabs, and informatics. We are working with uh, Oregon Health and Science University in Oregon for trauma. And for trauma, we're working with uh, uh, Hanover University in uh, Hanover, Germany. They're one of the best with the, uh, the trauma network in Germany. And in orthopedic, we are co-branding with Missouri Orthopedic Institute for example, and then Stanford for orthopedic also. So on and so on, neuroscience with Cedar sinai and then Black Brain Health, and then Cleveland Clinic, 
and then gastrointestinal with Sano Hospital in Japan, and others. Obviously, we are working very closely with Sirat and, um, and some other uh, medical school in Thailand to uh, serve them and to learn from them also to because Center of Excellence already existing in Thailand, like in the medical school. Then we we have uh, we uh, we uh, assign nine hospital uh, to uh, to be center of excellence to serve what the president uh, uh, was talking about in the north is the in the central going to be uh, Bangkok Hospital, Samitwet, uh, and then Phaya Thai, and then in the north like Kung uh, uh, Chiang Mai and Udon. Chiang Mai is uh, taking care of uh, uh, ASEAN people from uh, from um, Shan State, southern China, and northern Laos, and then in uh, Udon Thani, taking care of Laos, the whole country, and we do have Royal Phnom Penh, and then uh, uh, Pattaya. Pattaya is taking care of uh, almost close to whatever uh, uh, Bangkok is doing because people are flying into Pattaya now from outside the country, and then Phuket from the south, of course. So. We assign COE network hospitals, like I just mentioned. We have flagships of four diseases, and then all the hospitals I just mentioned. And then uh, the critical functions of Center of Excellence, they have to act almost like medical school. They have to be able to do um, patient care, and then they have to do academic side. They have to do research, and co-branding, and the networking work. And uh, the most uh, uh, cause of death of people in Thailand, uh, we start with trauma, uh, cancer, cardiovascular, and neurosciences. Those are mandatory for, uh, for a center of excellences. And then some other uh, uh, diseases, we already assigned those already. And then, uh, we have to do patient-centric care. The reason we're doing that, because we have to move all the nine places have to be able to take care of all the difficult places. Then we have to be able to move critical people to all those centers. So we are talking about people, and we have to be able to share those resources also. Because of that, we have, to have uh, the critical part going to be network connectivity. We have to do alarm center and logistic with evacuation with the personnel to hospitals, all the nine hospitals, telemedicine, and all supports. Informatics, electronic medical record had to be shared for the whole places, for the whole nine places, and then healthcare information exchange. Out of those, we do move the people by, if uh, it's a little range like that, in 300 kilometers, we use EC-145 helicopter. Now we ordered a long, longer range helicopter, H-145, and then we just lease one uh, fixed wing ATR-500 to go beyond to, all, uh, to move people to, uh, ATR can, can be able to move patients to us, but here inside we move uh, critical people to uh, center of excellences. So this is uh, those three, uh, 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 vehicles. So the last slide can say that from, from private perspective to do center of excellence, the president's strategy said from horizontal growth 2011 to 2015 to vertical growth 2016 to 2018, that's what we're working on right now, to attract referral from ASEAN and Asia Pacific to ensure further growth and margins beyond 2018. We need to do that for our company. What is our, our um, challenge? Challenge is everybody knows already, and most of you have read Jim Collins' book. Jim said, good is the enemy of great. Our challenge right now is really our own hospital that's already good. And they have to work hard to be great. And we start seeing some resistance from some of them already. They already make margin, 
and they don't want to go on further for the future. But we're going to work hard on it, and we hope we can do that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Chatri. And now I would like to uh, turn the floor over to Dr. Pradit from uh, Thiri Lapa, Priya Maharaj Karun. Oh, good morning, everybody. If you don't mind, may I uh, uh, stand to speak? Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, for inviting me uh, to join this interesting meeting. Usually, is that not uh, related directly with my job? So, I will introduce you to the four topics. We will inform the Srinath introduction to all of you. For the 20 minutes, I will give you an overview of the new service at the new hospital of the Faculty of Medicine, Srinath. Silat Hospital was estimated in the 1888 by the King Rama V uh, as the memorial of the, his beloved son. He passed away at the young age with the infection. At that time, His Majesty the King stated that even my son, he still suffered from the disease. So, what it could be if it happened to my uh, people's children. So, he brought the uh, all material from the cremation to build the hospital and gave the name at the Sirat Hospital. This is the first public hospital in Thailand in the 1888 and this is the first building of the Sirat Hospital. And right now, this is the Faculty of Medicine Sirat Hospital now today. Its course is was uh, obvious. The number of the patient had increased and the amount of beds has grown up over time to meet the demand of the patient. Right now, the public uh, has recognized the CIRAT at the Hospital of the Land because we serve the Thai people for more than a century. CIRAT is the first government hospital in Thailand. CIRAT is the largest hospital in Thailand with the 2,500 beds and is the biggest medical school in Thailand with the 250 medical students a year. But why we need change? After the estimate of the faculty of Sirat and the Sirat Hospital, we had the support from the government for, the opera for our operation because it was a non-profit organization. But at the year of 2003, the then government had a policy to transform the organization of the government to be autonomous organization. The reason at that time was the government faced about the budgetary constraint and want the government university to improve their management efficiency so that is the sponsorship from them could be reduced. And the Maidon University is expected to transform to the Automat University. And the Faculty of Medicine Silat Hospital was about to share the same face because uh, it is an organization under the Maidon University. That is the first challenge that we faced in the 2003. The mission of the medical school have the three missions. They are the teaching, services, and research. In the 2003, we had the 1.6 million patients of outpatient and the 50,000 for inpatient. That is the heavy burden. The cost of the faculty stood at the 4.7 billion baht, but we obtained that 1.6 billion baht, or equally 35% from the government. The question was, the faculty could afford 35% of the total cost by itself if the policy of government was implemented. 
That's what we think it could be happen in the future. Ten years afterwards, in the 2014, the mission of the Silat Hospital remains the same, but the cost of the faculty rising up almost four times, 217 million baht, with the double of the inpatient and outpatient patient from the 1.6 million to 3.2 million, and for the 85,000 for inpatient. You can see that it is a large amount of money and the subsidy percentage was cut from the 35% to 20%, equally about 3.5 billion baht. Silat have to cover it by itself. You can imagine that it's difficulty. That's why, how to survive? It is nearly impossible for us to generate the income from the teaching and from the research. Medical services is the only possible means to do that job. We have no experience at all about this business, right? your business like this. I mean that I, we have no experience about the private sector on top of the public sector. So before we move on, we had to start the pilot project, a small pilot project. We called it it's the, the Heart by Sirat. It's, it's a very small project. The Heart by Sirat was implemented in the 2007. Like I showed you that, it's, it was very small. We have only seven examination rooms for, in patient, for our patient, and we have the two rooms for investigation. And we have only 21 beds for inpatient, and we try to uh, create the environment like a private hospital as you see in this picture. After the five year operation, the number of the patients, both in the OPD and the in IPD, increased dramatically. The heart by CRAS received a warm welcome from the public. And also, it was quite healthy financially too. So, its success could be used as the model for the management of the bigger project. Right now, we will bring you to the Sirat Piyamaha Rajkarun Hospital, or I say that it's a SIPS from now. SIPS was opened on the 26th of April 2012. It looks like this. Faculty of Medicine Sirat Hospital offers the medical services into three classes, like an operation of the allies. At the beginning, we have the like a economic class. This is the this is the what the, the great group of our patients. But the decades ago, if you can remember, we run the special clinic is operate daily with the after official hours. It can be like a business class. The patient have to pay slightly more for their right to choose the doctor and for having the more convenience of the non-medical services. But today, faculty has the new services, the first class by Sirat Piyamaha Rajkarun Hospital. But the most importantly, all patients receive the same standard of treatment as provided by faculty of medicine Sirat. It looks like uh, regarded your class. It looks like the airline. The airplane bring its all passenger to the same destination with the same safety, regarding of their classes too. That is the concept of the Faculty of Medicine CRS Hospital to bring the plane to go to the destination. The concept of the SIPS is that at SIPS, you are receiver and giver at the same time. What does it mean? It means that while you use the SIPS services, you are the receiver who receives the same standard of medical care at the CRAD. And at the same time, you are the one who gives the money back 
to help the poor people at the Faculty of Medicine, Sri Ratha Hospital too. It's, it's look like a Robin Hood, right? It's a story that you know every, you already know very well. Robin Hood is the one who stole the money from the poor to help the uh, to the rich. Yeah, sorry about that, right? It's the one who stole the money from the rich to help the poor. But for us, it's quite a little bit different because we have received the money from the client who will fill, who will, what you call that, who pay for the, our services, who are failing to fail. But the money that we get the profits, we will spend back to help the people at the Faculty of Medicine Sirat Hospital too. Before we move on, we must have a clear vision and mission. The mission of the SIPS is to provide the best clinical care contribution back to Sri Lankan society. And we want to be one of the most admired hospitals in Thailand in 2016. How we get there? We have the five strategic goals. Start with the firstly, to be the world-class tertiary care. And the secondly, we focus on the high level of integrity and ethics. Thirdly, we want to be the homey hospital. Fourthly, we want to be the customer-centric organization. And finally, our organization will have viability and sustainability. We have the three pillars to support our five strategic goals. They are the PCI. I am the cardiologist, right? PCI stands for the Percussionist Corey Intervention. But here, P is referred to the people. Any grand vision or mission cannot be achieved without people, as the Dr. Chatri says. And the C is the culture or the core value. It motivates our people to join forces and to carry through the task. And finally, the I stands for the IT. It helps us to uh, efficiency, accurate, correct, and the quick management for our operation. Let's look at the uh, performance in the first four years of our operation. We start, with the, we start with the first strategy first. It's the world-class tertiary care. After one and a half year of our operation, we have received the JCI accreditation. The JCI stands for the Joint Commission International on the 21st of December 2013. JCI is a gold standard of the global healthcare. And the year after that, we shift our focus from the overall of the uh, quality of the hospital to focus on the treatment, particularly the disease. We want to be the center of excellence. And we start with the CCPC. It comes from the critical care program for certification and we begin with the total knee replacement. And also, we receive the accreditation on the 21st of November, 2014. Right now, SIPS is the first ho uh, public hospital that gets these two accreditation. But for this international accreditation, I would like to give a thanks and give the credit to Ajahn Chatri and the team of the Bangkok General Hospital who support us and who uh, helped us in developing the process, in developing the knowledge, and in developing the preparation for reaccreditation and accreditation of the JCI. Further on, for the subsequent of the accreditation, concerning about the one of the very important parts of the patient care, is this the infection control. And we have the Asia Pacific Society of Infection Control in the 26th of March, 2015. Now, we move on to the second strategy. Focus on the high level of integrity and ethics. As Dr. Chachi showed that good is the enemy of great, but we have to convert it. It is the most important thing for the healthcare services because we are dealing with the, the patient life, for the four years of our operation, absolutely, 
there were many mistakes, but it related with the treatment and its complication, not on the integrity and ethics. The rest of the, our mistakes related with the integrity and ethics remain zero at this moment. The third strategy of the home, home hospital, we would like our hospital to be the second home of the, our patient and of our clients. First, we did the, it the second home for, the, uh, for the, our staff first, so that when they are enjoy their work, then they can share culture to patients. We conduct the two employee engagement survey for two times. The recent, con the, the, the recent survey showed that you can see that the 55, 59% of the response were favorable to our organization, 30% were neutral, and the 11% for unfavorable. For the successful and the sustainable organization should have the engagement score more than 60%. For our need one more percent to reach the target, but by statistically, only one percent increase is this very difficult. So we move on to the fourth strategy of the customer-centric organization. We did the three surveys on the customer satisfaction, and the last one showed that. We score 4.5 for outpatient satisfaction and 4.4 for uh, inpatient satisfaction. These are close to the, our target of the 4.5. All I have present to you show that we progress and we move closer to our goals. But for viability, it will determine by the, the overall uh, operating results concerning the number of patients, concerning the income, and concerning the expense. Uh, this slide shows that at the first year of beginning in the 2012, we have the only the four center of the medical services with the 54 beds. And right now, we have the 20 center of excellence and uh, the total base of the 281. This slide shows the cumulative number of outpatients. We start with the 30,000 in the 2012, and the number of patients increased to 300,000 last year, and we expect it to be 400,000 at the end of this year. And this is a slide show the inpatient statistic of the cumulative number. At the beginning, we had 1,000 cases of the inpatient, but right now, last year, the number is up to the 12,000, and we expect it to be 15,000 at the end of this year. In summary, I introduce overview of the SIPS to all of you. SIPS is the new dimension of medical services of the Faculty of Medicine Sirat Hospital for the people who can afford their treatment and wanted to share money to help the poor people at the Faculty of Medicine. SIPS is a con has a concept that at SIPS, you are receiver and giver at the same time. The last but not least, I would like, on behalf of the SIPS, I would like to take this opportunity to thanks for the Ajahn Prasad Prasad Thong Osot and Ajahn Chati Duong Nes from Bangkok General Hospital who has been supporting us, who has been uh, helping us not only in the JCI accreditation but also in the hospital management as well. Both of them are our teacher and are our mentor. But I, want, I would like to let you know that I am not the PR from the Bangkok General Hospital. And I, Dr. Chadi doesn't ask me to speak like this, but this is the culture of the CRAD. Thank you very much for your attention.
Okay, thank you for the very useful information. Now we are entering the Q&A portion of the session. I will start off with a few questions first, and if anyone in the audience would like to ask a question, please uh, raise your hand, and um, one of our floor uh, employees would bring a microphone to you, okay? Um, so the first question for uh, Dr. Chatri and Dr. Pradit. Um, you talked about the, you know, the need to further um, improve the quality of health care in Thailand, and um, can you please provide us with some um, information about the major obstacles that um, that Thailand is currently facing, you know, in order to for the country to truly develop a, a world-class medical centers. Uh, I, will, I will speak from from the feeling of our company, not from myself. Okay, so obstacle right now. Uh, let's let's not talk obstacle. In order for us, all of us, to jump from good to great, uh, and I mentioned already. Uh, the resource, human resource, skilled people is very scarce in Thailand. Uh, that's why we talk about uh, having core brand of, of knowledgeable people from outside the country. So what we need is a four Ps, which is very corny words, you know, uh, uh, private, public, people. And so far we don't have uh, uh, all those three Ps, we haven't had any problem at all. It's in our private side, we've been working together. Public side, you can see here, we, you know, we really close to each other and helping each other. We have, I have to say that thank you for saying kind thing about our organization, but we did that to serve the country and because the Iraq that served all people. We in the private side didn't have a chance to serve the poor people, and you've done a great job. That's why we want to serve all of you. So, and number three is the people. We try to work with them. The government side has been helping us all along. What do we want? You can see that the, the minister was sitting here before us. You know, anything we want, you can give to us. The last P, P number four is professional. I think that's the one that have to come along with the rest of, uh, of all of us to help. Uh, right now, uh, if you remember, uh, Singapore uh, was uh, uh, celebrating uh, getting foreign doctor, knowledgeable foreign doctor, 10,000 foreign doctor into the country. They have big celebration. We envy them. And I think uh, we hope someday in the near future we can do the same thing with knowledgeable people. All those uh, co-branding, we will bring all the doctors coming to our country, but they will, won't be able to do anything because they still have to pass Thai license in Thai language. Uh, and uh, uh, I think if that's uh, done, I think that obstacle is done, then we will have enough knowledgeable people coming into our country to serve the essence of excellence for the whole world. So for the, the public size, we, do, we have to, uh, to tell you that what to, uh, the two answer. The first, I think that the obstacle first is that I believe that it, for the professional of the medical personnel, either the doctor, a nurse, and the technical, but the one thing is the shortage of the personnel because uh, if you want to have the uh, expertise of the, uh, this, prof this professional, it takes time to training. And the second, uh, for the public side, is we need the, uh, what do you call it, the research, particularly the basic research to support the center of excellence. That is one of the most important, because uh, right now we are improved, like uh, the CLAT has one building for the uh, research to support the, our, the, our hospital and uh, the whole country as the basic research to support the clinical growth. Thank you, thank you very much uh, for that insightful um, information. So it sounds like um, personnel is one of the key um, obstacles that Thailand needs to, to work on. Is there something that um, the private sector and the public sector can do together um, to increase the number of qualified professionals in the, in the field? Um, or is that something that is currently being talked about at the moment? At this moment, uh, uh, private sector, not, not, not only in BDMS, some other 
able uh, hospital are working with medical schools, and they're trying very hard to in, not to start a new medical schools. We have enough medical schools, but we don't have, again, personnel. We don't have enough teachers, uh, professors. So uh, lots of, uh, so they're, uh, they're transferring up uh, personnel from private sector side on the top, you know, premium uh, knowledgeable people to teach in medical school. And lots of people who have been, who taught medical school moved to private side. We should share those uh, positions. And then I think uh, 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 the able hospitals on the private side should share the responsibility of teaching and training and research also on public side without having uh, the, uh, those hospitals to be uh, to, to burden on, on, on the cost side. I mean, it should be the job of uh, uh, the doctors on private side to also part of the job description is to, to support and to serve in teaching and training in, in uh, medical school also. That's, if that happens on all levels, doctors, nurses, dental, uh, I think uh, that will help a lot on, on, on the personnel in our country. Oh, I, I will let you know that uh, we are not a competitor with the, the uh, private sector. Actually, we are work together and uh, because uh, the medical school have uh, a lot of the expertise, uh, technician and uh, professional, and uh, it may be, if we work together, it can less the standard of the healthcare as a whole in the country, such as that in uh, some uh, uh, private hospital cannot do the complex disease. When the patient come, they can send that to our, pay, to our hospital, and then we finish my job, uh, I will send back. That is the good thing for the cooperate between the two, con the two uh, organizations. This is, I think that could be go with uh, alignment, not with the competitor. Thank you very much. And uh, my last question is, in your view, are there certain areas of specialties that the Thai medical industry, Thai hospitals, um, should focus on or you think would be our main advantages to, uh, you know, in order to continue to attract um, patients from uh, the region and other countries? Okay, uh, for me, I think that's it. For Thai people, for Thai uh, medical uh, status right now, I think we can compete uh, any specific disease all the world. It does not an obstacle, but the advantage is the hostility of the Thai and also the price we can uh, compete from uh, many parts of the world. In, in the view of uh, BDMS, uh, we're looking, at, as you can see, the center of excellence, we have four, four uh, diseases, four, four uh, disciplines we're focusing at. And with, right now, uh, for trauma, on accident, uh, Thai people die from uh, accidents, uh, number two in the world. But compared to India, so when it comes to proportion of number of population, I think we're number one in the world that die from uh, so trauma is number one. Number two, since 1999, uh, cause of death uh, other than accident in Thailand is really from cancer. And number three, obviously, going to be uh, in, in cardiology. And number four, brain diseases. I think uh, those four is the same for the whole world. So we're focusing for Thai people and then let the rest of uh, uh, ASEAN or Asia Pacific or some people come and, and share those uh, advancements with us, I think it's okay. Okay, um, thank you so, so um, very much. Um, and now we'll probably have time for one or two uh, questions. If anyone in the audience would like to um, use this opportunity to ask our two distinguished speakers um, anything regarding the Thai healthcare, please do so. Uh, Okay, um, if there's no questions from the audience, I think um, we pretty much use up the time. So I would like to end today's uh, panel on healthcare and thank you very much um, for attending. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for your insights on the growth of healthcare industry.